longer than what my daughter puts on. Uh, nail polish. And if this tragedy didn't happen in Orlando, when I saw him, I would have had a specific judgment call on him. And not a good one. But when I saw him yesterday, my heart broke. Because I know the evil inside of me. And I know how I have sinned. Against him. I don't even know him. But because of what I perceived him to be, I realized that I have, I have changed. Nothing is going to change unless I change. And you won't change unless you come to this point when you realize that God has not called you to point out the failures or the sins of others, but God has called you to see your own sin. Amen. Take it to Him and go out into the world and show His love. Amen. Catherine, I don't know how you do your job. Every day, day in, day out, you deal with some of the hardest aspects of society. Innocent babies born to drug-addicted parents. And yet you have to deal with the mothers. You have to deal with the fathers. And do you go in there and do you lay down the law and tell them what bad sinners they are? No. And you go places that I would never even dream about going. And they know who you are and they know that you care. Is that right? Is it easy to do? I leave it in God's hands. Listen. We need to do the same thing. It is so easy for us to just go about our day-to-day -day lives. Let me ask you a question. That shooter went to Disney World quite a few times before he did what he did at this bar in Orlando. What happened if he chose that target? Mm -hmm. There would be a much different uh, reaction. reaction from the community. What happened if he just went across the street and went into a straight bar and shot that? There would still be a much different reaction from the Christian community. That's wrong. Amen. It shouldn't be that way. saw this one, they, they've been interviewing the survivors, and I saw this one man, and others made the same comment. And prior to this, I would say, no, that shouldn't be. But listen, your gay community is not going anywhere. You wake up tomorrow, they're going to be here. You're going to be here as well, is that right? Either you're just going to ignore them, hope that they go away, or you're going to find out how to dialogue within that community and for them to dialogue with us. They said that that bar was a safe place. And I want you to think about this. If you or one of your children <coughs> frequented a place like that, it is a safe place. Think about it, right? Because if they were to go into a straight bar, it might not be so safe. Is that right? I want you to think about when you were in school, what it was like, because you remember those kids, and they usually got picked on all their lives, from childhood to adulthood. This was a safe place for them. They were not expecting anything like this to happen. And I'm going to tell you that I'm glad that that bar was there so they could have a safe place. Most Christians would go, oh, that's, man, you're stepping in, you're going, you're going wrong there. Either they're a part of your community, and what happens to them should affect you, and vice versa. Again, you stand on the Word of God, I stand on the Word of God. But the Word of God tells me how I'm to treat those that aren't like me. Right? Turn with me to Romans. Before we go on, I just want to say one thing. Yes. It's a lot of good. It wouldn't happen, I don't think, to Christian people. People that did this were Islamic, and they don't even believe in Christ. So that's why it happened. Because the, the, one of their tenets is to kill anybody that is not like them. Well, let's look and see what has come out in the uh, investigation of this shooter. 
right at the end, he pledged his loyalty to ISIS. He would have never have been accepted into ISIS because he was a frequent patron of not just that bar, but other gay bars in that community. This man was dealing with issues of his own sexuality. Okay? ISIS wouldn't have accepted him. ISIS said, oh yeah, he was one of ours because it's a propaganda tool for them. His family was Muslim. His father on TV has never said, or no asked, do you think your son was gay? Oh no. Why? Because, again, it's such a major tenet of their, of their religion. Let me ask you a question. What's the difference between their stance and my stance? Where God speaks clearly about it. The difference is, is how are you going to treat a person of that gender? Of that orientation? What are you going to do when it's not just one, but it's a group and a community? What are you going to do if you were Pam Bondi and Anderson Cooper got on TV and started to ask you about your stance when you were being elected and you said on TV that homosexual marriage was dangerous to the community? Not because you felt that way, but because you wanted to be elected. I hate politics. I hate both sides of it. What I love is Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ allows me to hold fast to the Word of God. It cannot change, and if it cannot change, so I will not change what the Word of God says. But what the Word of God tells me is that I am to love and to respect and to treat just like God treats me. That's how I'm to treat people that differ from me. Yes, ma'am. I was just thinking, would it have been great if there was a church in Orlando where they felt that they could the bar? Think about that. That makes people very uncomfortable. Do you mind standing up and actually saying that loud? I just said, um, wouldn't it have been nice if there had been a church in Orlando where they felt the same as that bar? Yeah. What does Romans chapter 12, verse 20 say? Therefore, if your enemy is hungry, do what? Feed him. If he is thirsty, give him a drink. Verse 21, do not be overcome by evil, but what? Overcome evil with good. How are you to overcome evil with good? Turn to Matthew chapter 5, and we'll see. Matthew chapter 5, this is Jesus speaking. Do you know what this portion of Scripture is called? Taken from the Sermon on the Mount. Matthew chapter 5, verses 43 through 47. You have heard that it was said, you shall what? Love your neighbor and hate your enemy. What does Jesus say? Well, hold on for a minute before we go there. Uh, is, that a, is that a quote from... The Old Testament law? Look in your Bibles and see if there is a reference going back to Deuteronomy, Leviticus. Okay. So, this is a quote from the Old Testament law. Who gave that Old Testament law? Now, I want to know which, yeah, who gave it? Ricky? That's right. So, is Jesus contradicting Jesus here? There is a reason why Jesus said, you have heard from old, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. Then he goes on to say, but I tell you to what? Love your enemy. Do good to those who persecute you. Keep reading. Was he contradicting himself? And the answer is no. What had happened was, is that the people, the people, had distorted the meaning of what was supposed to happen back when he gave it in the law. That now he's clarifying it. He didn't have a change of heart. He's not playing good cop, bad cop. But what this is about is this is about how you interact with people. Also, there was a difference between the law of if you 
hurt somebody, and Janet brought this up in my Sabbath school class. If you hurt somebody, you disfigure somebody. You know, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. That was a civil law that was supposed to be uh, magistrated by a judge. That if I broke your tooth, we go to court. The judge says, okay. The law says a tooth for a tooth. An eye for an eye. It kept vengeance from and revenge from being uh, perpetrated on those people or their families. You guys understand that? But what happened was, is that there was two paragraphs and they synthesized it down to one. An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. God gave specific instructions of when that was supposed to take place. Okay? And again, that was under a theocracy. So, right? Well, under insurance things, we have to, hey, hand is worth something, and eye, you know, if you get hurt, I mean, there's a certain figure that's attached to it. Exactly. So, let's look at this verse, verse 38. You've heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. This is verse 38. But I tell you, not to resist an evil person, but whoever slaps you on the right cheek, pull out your gun and shoot him because you live in Florida, and you have to stay in your ground law. Is that what it says? Uh, what do you think, Ray? I think the stand your ground law, personally, really, you want my opinion? Yes. I think the stand your ground law is a good law and it protects women. Because I can run away and I don't have no desire to shoot anybody. And if it was two or three guys, I'd take a bunch of them if I had to. Okay? If I didn't feel like my life was threatened. But I want my wife, who can't run away from any man, to be able to defend herself. And she shouldn't have to run. So, does he make sense? Yes. yes. Okay? So, understand that there is, on both sides, good and valid points. With what he just said, I agree with. Okay? What I don't agree with is Christians who say they've, they've, turned, they've turned political. Right. I like that, that they, will, they will spout whatever the Republican or whatever the NRA wants to say. You need to be Christ's not the NRAs. You need to be Christ, not the Republicans. You need to be Christ and not the Democrats. Okay? Think for yourself. I want to be able to see my family protected. Do you know why there's a three-day waiting period for you to buy a pistol here in Florida? <coughs> Any ideas why? Cool down. Cool down. Okay. Well, it's called cool down. But do you know why they actually made that law? Because if you go back 15 years ago, you had a rash of shootings of husbands or boyfriends that were upset with their girlfriends or ex-girlfriends or ex-wives and went in, and got a gun, and shot them. That quick. Politics is never proactive. It's always knee-jerk and reactive. So you had these shootings that then one very upset man who killed his estranged wife or girlfriend shot the country or the state, and so they made laws. Hence the three-day waiting period. Do you realize you can go and buy an AR-15 and get it in 38 minutes? Don't you see a problem there? Now I tell you that because the news just did it two days ago. They went into a state that had a three to five day waiting law on a pistol, but brought an AR-15 in 38 minutes. Now they have an agenda. Okay? They have an agenda. Come to your senses. Think for yourselves. Think for the best of your community. I do not want to see them outlaw guns. Because we have wicked people that live here. And I want to be able to see you protect yourself. But I also don't want to see Anybody and everybody have any access to military-grade weapons. There's no reason for that. And if it can save people, then it's worth making the change. <coughs> None of that means anything if you do not know Jesus Christ. And this is where I will end. This world is going to get more chaotic. It's going to get darker, and it's going to get darker. And these events are going to happen more and more. And, and what shocked you today is going to be nothing tomorrow. Okay? Either you're going to be that salt and light. Either you're going to be 
the hands and feet of Jesus Christ, and as the world gets bigger, you grow lighter. So you need to realize that when you do that, the world's going to hate you. They're not going to come embracing you. But what it's also going to do is you think this world and this nation is polarized now. Just wait till that happens. Because the Bible tells you that before Jesus comes, there will be two groups and only two groups of people. Those who will accept the seal of God and those who have the mark of the beast. The mark of the beast will accept a lot of thoughts, cultures, religions. Christian. The word of God and the seal of God is going to accept one. Those that know the true and living God. Amen. You're not going to flash your political card. You're not going to flash your driver's license. It's going to be a change that happens in the heart. And brothers and sisters, I hope when you leave here today, you don't just keep going on the same way you've been going on. You don't keep thinking the same way you've been thinking. But that you will open your eyes and put your feet in the shoes of of your brothers who feed you and believe in you. And see the world from their perspective. And see as a Christian what you can do to show them the love of God. Now how many of you, now I want to ask this question, for you to raise your hands. This is a great idea because this, think about this. How many of you, don't raise your hands, just in your head, how many of you in here believe in abortion? How many of you in here believe that abortion is wrong? Think about it. How many of you believe that the people that bomb abortion clinics are right in what they do? How many of you believe that abortion should be done in the third trimester because it's about a choice and it's about what the mother wants? How many of you believe, again, think of these things. Because within the Christian church, those things divide and separate us. And if you believe differently than I believe, we really won't talk about that because, you know, I don't want to hear what you say. And, and we, it, it, won't, it won't be a civil debate after a while, we'll just argue. Why can't we talk about these things, hear each other's opinions, and continue to love each other even though we think differently? If you're not ready to do that, nothing's ever going to change. Nothing will make any difference. All I've said, all I've done, would be for nothing. Right? What does freedom actually mean? That's the only question I can Do you know what freedom really means? Freedom means that I am willing to protect the rights of the gay, lesbian, transgender community, that they have the freedoms to do, to live, to act in peace, to have jobs, to be safe. I will protect their right so that my rights are protected. Amen. I will protect the rights of the Muslim to worship God how his conscience dictates so that I have the right to worship God the way my conscience dictates. Amen. I will, for their freedom as well as mine, allow them free speech Amen. so that I have free speech. That's what freedom is about. Amen. Our closing hymn is hymn number three. Okay, no.
Dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you so much if we come into this house of worship. We want to just draw away these lines that divide us. We want to be a people that are of one mind and of one heart, Amen. serving you in spirit and in truth. We ask you that we would lay down our preconceived notions about things the way they are, the way they should be, and we would just be honorable to you Amen. and take what you have said about us, that we're blind and naked. And be in agreement with you and stop frustrating the work that you have for us to do. Amen. I pray that we would love our brothers and sisters whether we agree with them or not. You know, the beauty of God being in America is that we're free. Amen. This is, we're supposed to be a free people. And that's the way you have made us. You have made us free. Free and you don't force us to worship on Saturday or Sunday or any other day of the week. Amen. You lay it all down, Lord. And you want us to, to willingly serve you because we love you. And I pray that we would open our hearts. And when we open our hearts, we would see things as you see them. Amen. And we would love our brothers and sisters. Finish this work. And the light would shine like it's never before shining. And you would have a people that are prepared and ready to receive the mighty Savior. And we call him we look for him and we pray Lord this day that we just lay the junk down leave it in this room as we leave so that you can handle it and you can solve the problems because we are inadequate in and of ourselves to do anything in Jesus name Amen As brothers and sisters before you go we have uh, potluck uh, it's a vegan meal <coughs> also what I want what I hope is that those of you who are on Facebook, if this message was good enough for you to share, post it on your Facebook page. If we get five people to post it, how many people will see that? How many people will have the opportunity to hear it? This is why I've wrestled with this all week, wondering what to say. I want it to go to more than just you that are here. If you're on Facebook, where's Patty Kelcher at? Because she's going to be able to tell her to come out here for a minute. All right, here. She's good at knowing how to actually take it off of the website and put it on her Facebook page. I don't know how to do that. But if it's on her website, I can share it from her website not to mine. Patty! How you doing? Am I in trouble? No. Yes. <laughs> I, I, need, I need to ask the favor for That is that, again, if this message was good and you feel that it's worthy to share, you're good at being able to pull it off of the church's web page and put it on your Facebook. Can you do that? Because I know that if I can do it on, from yours, I can share it online. And other people, if they're friends with you, they can see it and share it and post it. I post it public so the whole world sees it. And right. that's what I'm hoping. If you're on Facebook, share this. Yeah, I'm hoping that it makes some type of difference. Thank you and God bless. You're very welcome.